In Massachusetts, as we just discussed, where the gist is recorded, there has been a rampant opioid crisis. Since 2001, Dr. Laura Kehoe has been treating patients with substance abuse. She came into the studio to share what it's been like dealing with the crisis and the best ways for parents to deal with the crisis. My name is Laura Keough. I'm an addiction medicine and an internal medicine physician at Mass General Hospital. And I also work here in Watertown at Right Turn, which is a multidisciplinary addiction treatment program. I am the medical director of Mass General's Bridge Clinic, which is an innovative on-demand urgent care addiction program as part of Mass General's more global substance use disorder initiative to lower barriers to um, patients with addiction and to provide on-demand um, immediate care. As a primary care physician, I take care of patients with a whole host of disorders, some acute, some chronic, meaning long-standing, um, incurable conditions, but that are treatable or can be managed. And one of the more common disorders we see in medicine is addiction. And on the flip side, even though we see it um, and patients are afflicted with this disorder, students graduate medical school with almost no training in identifying and being able to treat addiction. So for me, I was seeing many patients coming in with addiction at various stages, but largely at advanced stage disease and felt helpless to do much for them. So expanded my education and sought that out and it's actually become my career. Warning signs that a kid may be experimenting with drugs. One would be, you know, a change in in their peer groups. So changing from friends that they used to be with to now hanging out with other kids, isolating more and more time in their room, certainly change in grades, falling grades. We know that 80% of adolescents will experiment with drugs and alcohol. And actually, up to 90% of people who do develop an addiction started using when they were in their adolescence. So adolescence is a prime, high-risk time. So it's really, addiction is really considered a developmental disorder. And part of that is reflective of brain development. We know that the brain is still developing up until people are well into their 20s. And the part of the brain that is the last to fully mature is that front part of your brain that makes you, I, I describe it as the yellow light of your brain. It allows you to slow down, to kind of weigh the risks and the benefits of decisions, kind of the pros and the cons, and thoughtfully approach something. And we know that kids, by definition, therefore are hardwired, literally, um, as their brain is developing to take risks. So part of that is understanding that, that's, that, that this is a very risky time. Much like other disorders that run in families, when people have a disorder that runs in a family, they go to the physician, they tell them this is in my family history, they'll talk to their family members, you're potentially at risk of developing, say, diabetes or of heart disease or of certain cancers. So historically, families have kept this. People are conditioned to keep this very stigmatized disease that has been viewed as a moral failing, even though we know that that's not true, and not talked about it. And so one of the first things they can do is to talk about it and to talk about it early, as early as elementary school. So kids as early as seven, eight years old should know the risks, explaining you know, these are the risk factors in our family. If a parent has had an addiction themselves, talking about it, and they can, it can be hard to do on their own, but if they're in treatment or they have a support that can help guide them, and there are some um, excellent resources out there, the National Institute of Drug Abuse in particular, and again, the just say no or dare scare tactics, we know they don't work. Um, and so, just like anything when you're talking to a kid, explaining to them the reasons why behind something, as opposed to just telling them not to do something, we know it doesn't work. 50% of addiction is genetically predisposed, meaning there's no choice in the, in the genes that we're born with. So this notion that it's a choice, people choose this life, is really in, in, inaccurate. In regard to stigma, we're talking about lack, why is it so hard for people to access care? And one of the, the biggest pieces is stigma or discrimination against this disorder, seeing it as a moral failing as opposed to a disorder or a disease that's treatable. And we see it even down to the lexicon we use. If you think about it, we're, we define people as being addicts. We say, you know, a heroin addict, which is 
um, defining them by their disease, as opposed to saying a person with a heroin addiction. So urine toxicology screens, for example, people will define them as being dirty or clean. And if you think about it, so if you describe somebody as being clean, meaning they're in remission and doing well, the implication is that when they're using, they're filthy or dirty. And so the terminology would be a toxicology screen negative for a substance or positive for a substance. So that's the terminology we're really trying to embrace to help to destigmatize this medical condition and help people to feel worthy of treatment. The biggest thing I would want people to know about addiction is that it is not a moral failing, that the behavioral manifestations of ongoing drug use despite negative consequences is reflective of the part of the brain that has been affected by the substance and that with the right treatment people can achieve remission and they can get their lives back and that the notion that people have to quote hit rock bottom is entirely false and outcomes will be better the earlier we intervene and provide the right kind of support. There are two websites, two resources that I would recommend. One is drugabuse.gov, that's the National Institute of Drug Abuse website that is an extensive website with educational uh, materials for anyone from teachers to parents to patients to loved ones. Um, and then for treatment in Massachusetts, there's a centralized database where there's somebody 24 hours a day and a website that can help you to find care based on your region, your insurance, your substance, and that's helpline-online.com.